good day YouTube. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and this is the Clay Way. If this video is helpful, please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my video, sending me your nice comments, and give me them sweet old thumbs up. If you've got a question for me, hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger, and I'll certainly try to answer that for my subscribers for absolutely free if I can. Keep in mind doing this job, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Okay, so I scoured the interwebs looking for a video showing me how to remove this lower control arm here, and I'm gonna do it on the passenger side of this 2004 Dodge Ram 1500. Um, and it's a pretty straightforward job. We're gonna do the ball joints. I'm gonna show you some easy steps on how to remove these ball joints without destroying them. Upper control arm and lower control arm ball joint. Now, I'm not certain of the actual procedure for doing this, but I do know that this is our torsion bar and it's keyed. So what we wanna do, just to make sure I don't make any mistakes in my video, I've taken a paint marker, marked where my bolt position was there and marked where my key position was here. And even though I'm not gonna end up reusing this control arm, I went ahead and marked the key position here on the control arm just for good measure. Now more than likely, uh, you're changing this lower control arm not because it's defective, but because the bolt broke on your shock right there. I'm here to tell you I spent the last four hours trying to get that bolt out. I pulled tricks out of my bag that I didn't even know I had, and I still could not get that bolt out of there because we live in the rust belt. Now I'm gonna take penetrant and spray it on my nuts and bolts that I'm gonna remove. This is an 18 millimeter here. These nuts back here are 24 millimeter. Could possibly be one inch. So we're gonna spray it on there. Upper ball joint, lower ball joint. We're gonna remove the 13 millimeter bolts that hold our caliper to the bracket. It's not necessary to remove the bracket, but you can remove the bracket if you like. It will make it lighter. In this video, we're gonna pull out a couple tricks. And for my first trick, the next one is gonna be much better than this one. I take a pair of pliers, wire cutters. If you've, if you've ever had one of these break off inside here, you know how much of a nightmare that can be. What you can do is you can take your pliers, wire cutters, grab onto the tip of the cotter pin, and then pull backwards like this, and you'll slide it out a little bit. Then you'll open up the cotter the pliers again, grabbing it on the cotter pin to pull it out when it's all jangled up like that. Try to get it as straight as possible in the back, but sometimes they're rusty inside there. Because of the position of my cotter pin and where it's at, I had to take a pick tool, stick it in there and give it a little pry back, but I'm not gonna use that because I don't wanna bend up the tip. Grabbing a hold of the cotter pin just like that, we can simply take our pliers and work it out just a little bit at a time. In order for this to work successfully, you wanna make sure that your pliers are flat up against your nut and as close to the nut as possible so you can pull it out a little bit every time. This will really come in handy if you don't have a new counter pin like this one was. Just pick the rest of that out of there. Now taking a 21 millimeter, we're gonna loosen the upper control arm ball joint nut. All right, now taking a hammer, we're gonna strike right here. We're not gonna strike right here. We're not gonna strike right here. We're gonna strike right here. And we're gonna hit that square I'm gonna miss it, there's no two ways about it. I do it all the time. And as we do that, we'll take our other arm and we can just gently apply pressure right here. It's really not needed, this will separate. Just like that. Now, if this was not brand new, it might have took five or six strikes to get that out of there. But I promise you, this will work every time and you will not damage your component. Now I'm going to show you how to remove the tie rod without destroying it effectively and easily at home in your driveway. We are going to remove the tie rod end this way because there's no sense in replacing parts that are not defective. 
first we're going to take a needle nose pliers and straighten up our cotter pin as best we can. Once our cotter pin is somewhat straight, we're going to take a set of wire cutters, we're going to set them on the back side of there, and then we're going to push this way, which will allow us to grab onto it. We are not cutting through the cotter pin. We are just using these to rock the cotter pin out so it does not break off inside. Now taking some first laid penetrant, we can spray it on the end of the nut. Sorry, I mean first aid. Using a 7 8 or 21 millimeter socket to remove the tie rod end, we're gonna use a shallow, and the reason we're using shallow is because it has more torque than a deep well will. And if you're at home and you don't have sets of torches or maybe an impact, if you have an impact at home, it's gonna give you more torque and speed the nut off of there as quickly as possible without torches or heating up the nut. All right, so we're gonna take a larger style hammer and we're gonna hit right here in this location here. We're not gonna hit on this, at least I'm gonna try not to, and we're not gonna hit up on the tie rod end. This will send energy through here, then I'll have my other arm holding the tie rod up and it'll just pop out of the socket without any kind of pliers, pickle forks that will damage your boot, etc., etc. So we're gonna hit it pretty hard right here and we're gonna take our arm and put it at the bottom of the hammer so we can get power while holding our arm up it will just literally pop out now using a 21 right here and a 24 right here then we're going to start on the torsion bar we're going to leave this bolt up inside here and just take off the nut Holding the stud with an 11 millimeter and loosening the nut with a 24. Now taking a 17 millimeter wrench and holding the top of the stabilizer link pen, we're going to take an 18 millimeter socket and remove the link pen nut. Taking a 15 millimeter wrench and a 17 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the rest of the stabilizer link pen. Taking an 18 millimeter here and an 18 millimeter here, we're gonna remove these four bolts. There's two here on this side and then two over on this side. And we're also gonna remove the 15 millimeter nuts that hold down our transmission mount to the cross member and remove the cross member. Now taking an 18 millimeter, we're gonna loosen our torsion key bolts. I did have to use heat to get my bolt to come loose. It was stuck in there pretty good. Now I wanna start working my torsion bar back and forth to be able to get it out of the hanger. So I'm just gonna give it some taps. Hopefully I can get it to move in a little bit. Rocking this back and forth, I should eventually be able to get it to slide out of my control arm. Once I get the long tail out of here. Looks like all we have to do is raise up on it and pull it out. It's heavy. Once the torsion bar is removed, we have a T60 that's up in here, but I was able to just lift up on my control arm and I can slide the bolt right out. If your control arm is angled properly, you should be able to just slide the bolt right out. My control arm is ready to come off but I need to use two hands. Super sweet, she's out. I will point out that I left one of my bolts inside my transmission cross member because I couldn't get the stinking bolt to come out. 
I didn't know if it was a big deal or not, and I don't know if the extra room was actually helpful. So you can certainly try to take it out without it, but I do think it made a difference. And the only reason I removed my complete stabilizer link pin was so I could move my control arm up and down to help loosen my torsion bar up. Now taking our old heavy stinking control arm, we want to set it near our newer still stinking heavy control arm and make another yellow mark in the same location that that one was. Now we're gonna take the control arm, if it's not obvious, and put it back up in the control arm space. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and install our torsion bar, and we're gonna line up our yellow marks like we drew them on there before. So we've got that installed. I'm assuming that it's off a little bit because we don't have it set. I've got it through my transmission cross member and down here ready to install my key. Now installing the key is pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna get it up in there. It might be a little bit difficult and you might have to shim this up and once I get mine in there, I'll tell you if I have any problems, but it's looking like it's going in there pretty much the way it's supposed to. Having an assistant hold up the control arm and installing the key is gonna be your best thing. And then hitting this key onto the torsion bar is gonna also allow it to drive it into place. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our key up inside here. We've got the arm of this up inside here passed so we can get the key underneath there. And we're gonna set it into the slotted grooves here on the side of the frame. And then we can start our bolt up inside there that'll push on our arm. Once you get your front end assembled, you can go ahead and tighten up your torsion bar key to the mark that you made on the side of it. And we should be all set. I don't think it's gonna be absolutely necessary that I show you guys how to reassemble this because you did take it apart, you know? Hopefully you guys found the video to be informative, interesting, and you learned how to use things that you never knew how to use them this way, like the sledgehammer trick. God bless. Please consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, and giving me them sweet old thumbs up. Have the best of days. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too.